Cozer the viewers comments. I'm just going to say a few brief things before we begin. Number one, when you choose to comment on my YouTube channel, there are terms and conditions, there are rules that you must follow. It's my house. I expect you to follow the rules. If you don't, your comment probably will not be published. I ask that you be honorable and graceful, i.e. respectful of everyone here. Don't go around telling people what they should or shouldn't do. If you come here making claims, making claims about this or that or the third or something that's happened to you or whatever, having to do with grammar or courts or whatever, you better be able to certify your correct sentence structure knowledge because this is a correct sentence structure channel and I am going to call you to the carpet on it. If you start making claims about something that you perhaps don't know what you're talking about, it's very important for the safety of the vessel. If you have closure on correct sentence structure, you should be able to provide that proof like that. So keep that in mind. The energy you bring here, I will return. I will balance it out with rule one, rule equal. So without further ado, let's get to the comments. Once in a while, folks, I will get individuals that pop onto my channel and they will write out sentences as you can see on your screen here you can see one two three four five six comments all written uh, in this style you see here which some of it is correct sentence structure uh, not 100 percent correct sentence structure could well okay I'm fond of saying either something is correct or it is not correct with the balance of the honor and the grace, um, some of it is about 80 to 90 percent there, which means it's not correct, but it's close. But over half of it is definitely not correct. So once in a while, I'll get commenters like this that will burst onto my vessel. I mean, maybe it's ignorance. Um, you know, just they just don't know any better, don't have ad etiquette, they don't read the terms and conditions, and they just inundate a comments field with quantum gobbledygook like this. They don't translate to plain simple English, they don't credential themselves, they don't use a correct name. They don't take jurisdiction nor authority over the words that they're, you know, wanting me to read in the comments field. Like this individual, I really don't know what their volition is in, in being here. At first I thought they were a troll, but now I'm not so sure. But why don't we just get into it, and uh, then we can, at the end, when we get the whole story, then we'll be able to get a better, clearer picture of what's going on here. So you see here this first comment that they leave. It says, for the correctness of utility function with the David Wynn Miller's proof. So whatever it is they're trying to convey has to do with the tilde. Now, I don't know if they're telling me that this is what a tilde is because they think that I don't know what a tilde is. Or maybe they're just sharing knowledge apropos of nothing. They're sharing David Wynn Miller's words, maybe. I don't know if these are David Wynn Miller's words or not, or if it's the correct quantum grammar commenter's words. I don't know if they think I'm doing something wrong. I really don't know. Because they're not letting me know, number one, because they're not credentialing themselves. And they don't possess enough closure on correct sentence structure to be able to communicate using that technology clearly. So I really don't know what it is they're saying. But what I can do at, is look at what they've said and show the errors in it and then also show how to correct it. Okay, so it's pretty funny. Anyways, the username correct quantum grammar I don't know if they chosen that name rather than using their correct name maybe they chose that name to show that that's eventually what they want to do they want to use correct quantum grammar or I, I mean I don't know these are all guesses because again they've given no closure so what I've done is I've taken what you see on your screen here in that first comment and I've copy and pasted it over onto a word document so we can audit it so let's start with the basics. For the correctness of the tilde function with the David Wynn Miller's proof, right off the bat, there's no period at the end. There's no bringing the sentence to a full stop. So it's just dangling there. That is a critical error. And it's actually a pretty amateurish 
type of error. A careless type of error. As I've mentioned many, many times, I try and drive this point home. If you're going to use or try to use this grammar technologies, you better be prepared to be laser focused and do the absolute 100% best you can do to get all your punctuation correct and consistent and your grammar mechanics correct and consistent, your spelling, your spacing, everything correct to a T. Because if you're not willing to put forth that kind of an effort, my guess is you're not going to ever have any success with it. Or you're going to find some very uphill challenges. You're going to have to find someone with a lot of honor and grace. Because if you're trying to correct someone else's grammar, like if you're stopping a, a fiction trespass with a uh, fictitious conveyance of grammar, how can you tell someone else that they're using a fictitious conveyance of grammar when you can't even put a period at the end of a title or a sentence? You can't even get your correct, uh, punctuation correct. So we have, for the correctness, as you know, every correct sentence structure must start with a cause. Correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, the rule of thumb and is one and one is one. One word, one meaning, one function, one congruency. So the function of FOR, which is a, the part of speech known as positional, is cause. Every correct sentence structure must, must start with a cause. So this is correct. The cause of the sentence or of the title or whatever this is, is the correctness. So next would be of the, which is correct here, of the tilde function. So we have the cause, which is the correctness. And what's the correctness concerned with? The tilde function. Now, if we are going to continue on with this, you must put a verb in there. Because it's for the facts, of the facts, are, with the facts, of the facts, with the facts, by the facts. For, of, verb. With, of, with, by. If you're just writing a name, like for the Jason hyphen Matthew of the glass, period, that's fine. No verb is necessary because it's a name or a title. But that's as far as you can go with a title. After you have those two points with which to draw a straight line, for the correctness of the tilde function, now, if you're going to continue past that, you must put a verb of thinking in there. Jason hyphen Matthew of the glass. And then verb, if you're going to continue on beyond that. For the correctness of the tilde function. I hope I get that across to you. So this is not correct. You would have to have a verb in there, and then you would have to have another, at least one more position lodial fact phrase after the with the. Okay? So that is a critical error right here. Let's mark that with, uh, with red, because it is a critical error. Now here's another error. You look at David Wim Miller, you look at this name. Now, Colin David Ivan Wim Colin Miller passed away summer solstice of 2018. Therefore, using mechanics of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, his name would have to be capitalized. Okay? Because he is no longer here. He's no longer a live life claimant. Not only that, but whoever correct quantum grammar is, they have not correctly punctuated David's name. Not only is the colon missing here after the N and win, but they're also missing the degree symbol. Now with the balance of honor and grace, we can let that slide. Just like I'm going to let slide any underlining or bottom lining that would take place because YouTube does not allow for that function in the comments field. So I'm not even going to consider that. But I am going to consider that they have left out the period after proof and they have also left out the punctuation in David Wynn Miller's name. So that, in and of itself, throws the whole thing into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. Nonsense. So let's put a little red thingy right there to denote that the colon is missing. So now we'll syntax it and show you exactly what's going on here. 
So we have four, which is non-tangible. The is non-tangible. Correctness is non -tang is uh, tangible, and then of is tangible. So that looks like it's going to be a pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun, and then the obviously is an adverb in this scenario because nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence, or in this case, an adverb. Then we have tangible contract compound tilde hyphen function, which is an adjective, which is coloring with into a pronoun. Then we have adverb the. David hyphen win is a tangible contract adjective. And then Miller's hyphen proof is a tangible contract pronoun. So there you have it. Pronoun. Adverb, adjective, pronoun. Adverb, adjective, pronoun. Adverb, adjective, pronoun. You have a 4, 1, 3, 4. 1, 3, 4, 1, 3, 4. One, three, four. Not correct grammar. Now here's another critical error. You see this tilde 2. This is not correct. This tilde 2 is an adjective. Do you know why it's an adjective, folks? Because it has not been positioned as a fact. In order to have a fact, you have to position it with a position lodial phrase. So if you're going to have... Uh, Jason Matthew. That as it stands is a pronoun. But if I put a position lodial phrase in front of it, now it's for the Jason hyphen Matthew. Now it's been positioned as a fact. A five, six, seven. It's the same thing with two. For the two. Two is a fact. And it doesn't matter if I do this or do this. For the two. Now it's a fact. Or you could write it like this. For the two. Which is the same mechanic as doing this. Colon Jason hyphen Matthew. For the two. That is a fact. Also. In the context of this, in order for the two to be correct, you would put the colon there, and then you would also put a dash there to show that this is a location. It's item two, and the dash relates item two to this particular claim, whatever it is. That's how the mechanics of the dash work, and also... The numbering system but this individual didn't do any of that they just put a two there so a two this is going to be an adjective and an for is going to turn out to be a non-tangible contract pronoun but i'm getting ahead of myself here let's look at the particles of negation in this individual's facts so we have a vowel in front of a consonant right here. E in front of D at the beginning of the word. We have the ing gerund modifier. We have, of course, the AD here. Vowel in front of a consonant. U, S, vowel in front of a consonant. I guess that's about it. So we have identified all of the particles of negation here. At least the ones that I've seen here that, I, that I'm going to call out. This last part of the sentence is in parentheses, so I'm not really going to consider that. Interesting, though. 
it says 8,500 hyphen years of the syntax grammar modifications with every language. What does that even mean? How does anybody, how could anybody possibly prove anything like that? Unless you're 8,500 years old and you were there to see it. Otherwise, it's assumption presumption. So, good thing it's in parentheses, because I wouldn't consider something like that anyways. So let's take a look at the positional sequencing. We've already determined that it's not going to be correct sentence structure because they did not position the first uh, number correctly here. But let's go through it anyways for knowledge cultivation purposes. We have for the educational corrections of the fine communication, so that's cause concern. Then we have the verb R, which is correct because educational corrections is plural. Then we have possessive with the correction claims, which is possessing the modifying communications. What's it concerned with? The correction claims are concerned with fictional adverb verb usage. What's possessing the adverb verb usage? The functional methods. What are the functional methods concerned with? The fictional modification, parse syntax grammar. So it ends on an of though. So this sentence actually makes absolutely no sense to me. Simply because it doesn't end on an authority, it ends on an of the. Which means if you were to write this sentence backwards, it would have to start with with the. Because as my students certainly know, for is congruent with by, of is congruent with with. That is why you start sentences with for and end with by as positionals. Because four is congruent with by, of is congruent with with. One plus two equals three, three minus two equals one. The plus and minus serve the function of these four positionals. Plus is congruent with minus. Multiplication is congruent with division. Four is congruent with by, of is congruent with with. That way the facts can maintain their value going forwards and backwards, the same value. So we're going to put that one in red because that's critical. And they didn't use a period at the end. They, again, they neglected to put the full stop at the end. So let's syntax this thing. So as I said, this is a, the two is going to be an adjective. Four is going to be a pronoun, the adverb, adjective, pronoun. Adverb, adjective, adjective, pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun. See a pattern here, folks? And then we have the dangling participle verb at the end. So you have a 3 4, 1 3 4, 1 3 4, 1 3 4, 1 3 4, 1 3 4, 1 2. That's the very first comment that the username known as Correct Quantum Grammar has left on in my comments field on my channel, which is a grammar channel, and I've just given them a lesson on correct sentence structure. I've told them how to correct their grammar. Hope they find it useful. Let's go to the rest of the comments that they invested the energy in uh, writing out here. See if we can get some clues as to what they're up to. So the next one is, for the claimant's knowledge of the facts is, with the claim of the correct sentence structure communication parts of syntax grammar performance. So they're claiming a grammar performance. And what's possessing that grammar performance? The learning, of course, the ing modifier, particle negation, balance of the honor and grace. Let's 
ignore that and just say with the learn of the David Wynn Miller's quantum grammar again the upper lowercase name David Wynn Miller has passed away is no longer live life claimant uh, you would not articulate that name in that way it would be all caps so David Wynn Miller's quantum grammar is learning correct sentence structure performance that's very redundant and makes absolutely no sense to me it's it's nonsensical in a correct sentence structure uh, mode of articulation with the quantum parse syntax grammar now time Time is no contract, now is no contract, no tan non-tangible contract. Written, so written is past tense. So they're using past tense particles of negation in their facts. And then by the claimant, again, they do not credential themselves. They use the word claimant and claim, but they don't want to say who that claimant is. Are we supposed to assume who it is? Well, how can we assume if we don't even know the individual's name. I mean, I'm certain that correct quantum grammar is not uh, this individual's correct name, punctuated live life claim name. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. So they are refusing to take jurisdiction or authority over their own words. And I can see why, because it is quite nonsensical. I think what they're trying to do I think I think they're trying to give a gratitude claim. So perhaps maybe they could consider saying something like for the claimant's knowledge of the facts is with this claim of the gratitude with the knowledge cultivation of this claimant, comma space and then put the claimant's name with the correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar of the and then David Wynn Miller's teachings with this broadcast by this claimant and then put the claimant's name at the end something sort of like that that way you bring it into your jurisdiction you credential who you are and you're being sure to articulate that you're the one doing the learning. It's not unclear as to what's doing. Like here, it's pretty much saying that the David Wynn Miller's quantum grammar is learning how to do a correct sentence structure performance. You see what I'm saying? It's sort of redundant. So they're not, they're not quite there with the articulation. Practice makes perfect. So let's see what the next comment is. It says, for the voiding of the correct sentences with the voiding of the position of the fact, with the adverb verb communication of the, and then we end with an of the. So the fiction, okay. Again, more nonsense because it ends with of the. Quick fix would be by the. But even then, it really wouldn't make much sense because if you read that backwards, for the group fiction grammar fraud of the adverb verb communication is with the position loadial fact of the void with the correct sentence by the void. So it's a lot of voiding going on in this sentence <laughs> with the particles of negation ing. Um, there's a lot easier, simpler ways to say that sentence. And I've gone into that, you know, using creating damage claims in other sentences and it's up to quantum grammar correct quantum grammar to go seek those videos out if they want to or if they want to they can write me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com the uh, email address at the bottom of the screen and share their correct name with me and apply for a workshop so that uh, I can fill in these huge gaps in their grammar knowledge uh, for the tilde function of the correct parse syntax grammar is with the claim of the location. Again, no period here. Again, they end on an of the, you know, so they just keep making the same uh, mistakes over and over here. Which means, to me, it's a, it signifies that they perhaps don't know it's a mistake. They have no idea. And I've just given them closure as to the fact that it is a mistake and how to fix the mistake. And so I'd say, 
you know, I don't know what their syntax knowledge is. Uh, their parse knowledge is a bit lacking because they use a lot of particles and negation in their facts. Their correct sign structure knowledge is probably about 75%, I would say. 75% there. It's not bad. It's not bad, to be quite honest. Uh, but there is a lot of, there are a lot of holes that I see here. And I see a consistency in those holes. So I'm sure there are holes that that individual doesn't, they don't know that they're holes. So as uh, Colin David I've win Colin Miller once says, you don't know what you don't know. And that goes for all of us. So while at the beginning, I initially thought that this individual was a troll, I don't really think they are a troll anymore. But I'm going to save that judgment depending upon how they respond to this video. Whether they contact me in the confidential at my email address using their correct name and taking jurisdiction and authority over their words, or whether they do it through the comments field, share their correct name, or at least a clear articulation as to why they've chosen to comment. Because again, ladies and gentlemen, this is a grammar channel. I teach correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. If you're not here to learn the grammar, then why are you here? Because that is the purpose and function of this channel. If you're here to push some kind of agenda, well, I'm going to push you off the plank. Because I've just shared with you the terms and conditions of the channel. If you're here to learn, welcome. If not, das vidanya. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like and I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next one.